Today we are going to learn the basics of motion design and Adobe After Effects. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. Keep that joke in mind and you can accomplish large tasks in life, such as learning motion design. Let's start off by opening Adobe After Effects and clicking on New Project. Click on the New Composition button. This pop-up screen is where you set your project size, frames per second, and how long the animation will be. All of this will be based on where you want to upload your final animation, whether to social media or any other place to be distributed from. If you're going to be doing professional work, the places you distribute will give you a spec sheet with information on it to make sure you deliver the animations properly. Use this link to see the specs for various social media platforms. For this virtual workshop, we will be using basic 2K file size, also known as 1920 by 1080, which is a 16 to 9 aspect ratio. We will work off of 24 frames per second with a duration of 10 seconds. This is how to read basic timecode. Hours, minutes, seconds, frames. 10 second duration for this animation would look like 00, 00, 0, 0 10, 00, 0. Make sure to put a period or a colon in between the 10 and the double zeros. Don't be intimidated by the empty screen. It's like an empty canvas. Your job as an artist and animator is to fill it with content. Motion design is a lot like graphic design with additional elements of time and space. There are the four main panels, project panel, composition panel, side panels for frequently used tabs, and the timeline panel. Let's start learning the basics of motion design using the shape tool and starting with basic shapes. We'll keep it simple so you can absorb these concepts easier. Then you can take what you learn and push your skills further. Click and hold down on the shape tool to see the variety of shapes you can create in Adobe After Effects. Now use the rectangle tool, hover over it, and release the mouse key to select it. Now you see fill and stroke options appear with color thumbnails for each. If you click on the word fill, you get options to turn off the fill, have a solid fill, or have two different styles of gradient fills. Click on the color thumbnails next to each to set the color for either the fill or stroke or both. The same goes for the stroke settings. Now that you have a basic understanding of giving color or strokes to your art, let's start making shapes and learning how to animate them. For starters, draw a square. Hold shift to constrain the aspect, otherwise you get a rectangle. Now that you have something in your composition, you can start animating. Since this is a beginner's guide to motion design in Adobe After Effects, we will focus on the basics of motion. In other words, what people refer to as the four pillars of motion design, position, scale, rotation, and transparency. Position will change the location of your object. Think of it as going from one place to another across time. Scale will make your object bigger or smaller across time. Rotation will make an object spin and rotate around across time and transparency can be used to fade things off and on across time. Twirl down the arrow at the top left of the shape layer, then twirl the arrow by contents for the layer to access stopwatches which animate any or all of the four pillars of motion design. Step one, think about what you want to do. For example, a window shade being pulled down and change where the anchor point is. Animation begins with moving the anchor point. The anchor point influences the animation. If you have it in the center when you scale, the scaling will take place evenly, pushing outward or being drawn inward uniformly. If you want to animate a flower stem growing, place it at the bottom so the stem grows upwards. If you want to scale elevator doors opening, put the anchor point to one of the outside edges, not the top or the bottom. The black arrow you see here in the toolbar is the selection tool. This will select layers and items to place your project panel into your timeline. 
You can also use it to move around layers in the timeline as well as in the composition panel. Since window shades pull downwards and then retract upwards, place the anchor point at the top center of the shape layer. To move the anchor point, use the pan behind anchor point tool. Hold down the command or control key while moving the anchor point as you start to drag. Then hold down the shift key as well as the command or control key to snap it directly to a center point edge, center, or corner point. Step two, move the playhead to where you want the motion to begin. The playhead is the vertical blue line you see at the top of the timeline panel. You can move the playhead with the selection tool and click and drag to where you want to go. You can choose to have your animation start at any time in the timeline you like. I will have my animation start at the zero frame mark, the beginning of the sequence in my timeline. To quickly move the playhead to the beginning of the timeline, press the home key. To have the playhead go to the end of the timeline, press the end key. Watch. I will hit the home key and then snap my playhead to the beginning of this animation. Step three, click the stopwatch for what you want to animate. I will click on the scale stopwatch for this layer in my timeline. This creates my first keyframe in the timeline. To do any keyframe animation, you need to have at least two keyframes, both at least one frame apart, with change occurring to the property or parameter you set the stopwatch for. Motion design is art that changes over time. I chose the idea of a window shade style animation for a reason, to show you some troubleshooting techniques while teaching you how to animate. Window shades will either pull up or down, meaning their height will change, but not their width. This is an example of what is called non-uniform scaling. To the right of the scale stopwatch, you will see a little chain icon, as well as two numbers, separated by a comma with a percent sign at the end. If the chain button is showing, the scale animation will be uniform. A square will remain a square. That is not what you'll want. The width should stay the same and the height will change over time. Click on the chain icon to turn it off, and now you can animate the width and the height separately. The first number on the left is the x-axis. This controls changes side to side. To the right of the comma is the y-axis. This controls changes to up and down. Well, what does this mean? You won't want this to shrink side to side, you'll want it to remain the same width. Keep the x-axis set to 100% and change the y-axis to 0%. Step four, move the playhead to where you want the motion to stop. Move the playhead forward in the timeline and make the second change. Remember, you need two keyframes to do anything and they need to be at least one frame apart with a change to the stopwatch that you clicked on. The further apart the keyframes are, the slower the change is animated over time. The closer the keyframes, the faster that change will be over time. Keep the X axis set to 100% and change the Y axis from 0% to 100%. There are a few different ways to make changes. Click on the blue number and wait for it to become highlighted. Type in the number you want and then hit the enter key or click and hover while dragging side to side across the blue numbers without pausing. Or you can also make changes using the selection arrow and moving the object in the composition panel, which works best when animating the position. If you hit the spacebar on your keyboard, your animation will start to render and play. One useful tip, if you have the caps lock key on, your animation will not play. You must click off the caps lock key to preview your animations. Thank you for tuning into this tutorial. If you have any questions, email media at uif.org. Best of luck throughout your storytelling process.